woodworking, hiking, and amateur radio. Thank you. It, it's an honor to be here again tonight before you, and it has been about five years since I addressed this group uh, formally, so it's, it's good to be back, and I'm glad to be a member. I apologize for not participating. Um, this, so this is what, let me get you caught up to speed from what happened five years ago to now. Uh, I found that I had a lot more work to do than I ever imagined, and so my life uh, of all the hobbies that you've heard about have kind of been on hold for five years. And um, that includes amateur radio. Um, we were talking about, um, you know, the ham fest. I miss going to ham fest. <laughs> I really miss going to ham fest and, and getting to talk to people and seeing what's out there. I mean, I haven't been to a ham fest since I came here. Um, field day. I have gone to two of your field days. Um, briefly, but I, I miss spending the night at field day and working through the night and, and, and operating. And so uh, I am looking forward to retirement so I can get back engaged into the hobbies that I really love, uh, amateur radio being one of many. Uh, so it's good to be here tonight. I thought I'd talk a little bit about your police department in Albemarle County and a little bit about how we use and leverage technology a little bit about where we're going in the future with technology and then I kind of want to open the floor to dialogue and discussion and, and there are no limits to what we can talk about okay I'm not a technology expert um, I'm a technician plus you know I got my five words a minute in there's no such uh, license like that anymore so when I get out I'm gonna shoot to be general and, and catch up on everything I forgot about this hobby and begin to work my way up. So um, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about interoperability in, in this area uh, and public safety. And uh, please interrupt me and ask me questions along the way. I encourage you to do that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about communications technology. Um, our 800 megahertz radio system and the upgrade that we're getting ready to undergo. Uh, our current mobile CAD system, computer aided dispatch. If you don't understand an acronym, raise your hand. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Albemarle County Public Schools wireless project. Has anybody heard about that, the broadband project? All right, this is key to public safety too, so I'm going to talk very briefly about that. I'm not going to get into technical weeds, I can't. Uh, that's my limitations. Anybody heard of Rios? Raise your hand if you've heard of Rios. Okay, and your name? Andrew Wiley. Andrew, what, what do you know about Rios? I know that public safety uses it. I'm not sure the infrastructure or I just know of it. Okay. Good answer, Andrew. I mean, uh, very good. Uh, so I'm going to delve into that a little bit, of uh, that technology. As hams, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about VOC. Does everybody, who knows what VOC is? Okay. Jeff, I'm going to pick on you, the Aries guy. What's VOC? Um, I forget what the acronym stands for, but it's uh, the software that's used during emergency activations and uh, communications at the USC and, um, and all the different uh, elements, all the different uh, groups that that's involved correct. in the emergency. That's correct. So it, it's basically uh, a so software pl platform to help facilitate uh, emergency management and public safety facilities. In Albemarle County, Charlottesville, we used to use Web EOC. And if you ever were up at uh, EOC, as part of your role as amateurs, it was very difficult to use. So we have migrated to virtual EOC incorporated I think is what the acronym stands for but we've, we've uh, merged over to that. I'm going to talk a little bit about that and that's kind of neat stuff. Um, I'm not going to go real deep into our radio system. Um, that's our radios. I don't have one on me to, to pass around. Uh, you all have seen in them I'm sure. A uh, little bit about 
interoperability in this area. Uh, we're very far ahead of uh, many places in the country. Certainly far ahead of where I came from and worked 20, 28 and a half years up in Fairfax. We're, we're more progressed here in terms of interoperability than they are in the Washington, D.C. area. I will make that argument. Uh, we, we can all talk to each other, uh, in the city, county, university, uh, and our partners within. We all have interoperability and communications. Fire department, same thing, rescue squad. So it's a good thing. We're, we're, we have a good thing here in Charlottesville. Uh, so when the crap hits the fan, you know, we can talk to one another, which is where things break down, right, in every emergency mm -hmm. crisis. Um, that's why we exist as hams. One of the hats that we wear is to fill that void. Uh, our mobile CAD system today is um, a system that's uh, called FatPot. Um, it's actually, um, it's actually um, called something a little bit different today. Um, a new company has bought it, but anyway, computer-aided dispatch system, what it does is it allows the di dispatchers to dispatch police officers and rescue workers and fire department to, s to incidents, okay? Burglary in progress, for example. Up on the officer screen pops up an address, a brief explanation of what the call is, a dispatcher enters that information into the system, uh, and the system is supposed to give you directions, uh, GPS directions to the call to help speed things up. The system is also supposed to recommend the nearest available police officer backup if it's a call you need backup on. Well, this system that we use today that was purchased, I think about 10 years ago, has never performed to the level in its standard uh, requirements. It never has. <laughs> officers hate it. In fact, I'd say about three quarters of the officers don't use the system uh, because it's uh, uh, not reliable. So um, when I got here, uh, we uh, decided to put some money aside in the CIP to purchase a new CAD system. And so we have, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that shortly. Uh, the school wireless project. So Almar County Public Schools utilizes computers a lot to teach the kids. And so kids are sometimes required to log in from home on the internet, you know, to turn in their homework or to, to have a, uh, do some homework, those kinds of things. But not all kids in Almar County have access to internet, especially in the rural areas, right? So the schools have decided that they're going to try to bridge that gap and they are actually building a broadband wireless network in Albemarle County right now utilizing a number of different grant options. So how does that roll into police work? Well, we're going to a new computer-aided dispatch system, right? And one of the backbones of the communications behind that system is broadband, okay? And how we accomplish that under the new system will be through uh, cell phone service, okay? Uh, High-speed cell phone service. Well, Albemarle County is not totally covered and all, all the service providers don't call, cover every single area in Albemarle County. What this will do will allow us to, to, to uh, tap into their back end so to basically be a redundant system so when we get to those holes where uh, private cell phone service is not available, this CAD system will automatically switch over to areas where we have coverage on this system. And so we'll be able to continue using our computer-aided dispatch system. So this is exciting stuff for us. This is a partnership between the schools uh, and the police departments uh, in the area to help fill those voids. Before I move off this slide, I'm not an expert on this system, but I'll take it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yes? Are they putting those in schools? So this is how we're going to do it. The first uh, system has been uh, erected on Carter Mountain on the tower. And that system will link to uh, almost like repeaters or, or multipliers, and they'll be located at firehouses and in, on schools. 
The gaps beyond that will actually be carried by the patrol cars. The patrol cars will act as portable uh, repeaters along the way as well to fill in those gaps. Uh, no, that's right. So, um, you know, that's what I understand. And we're not anywhere near to that point yet. Yep. I'm in the wireless business, so I noticed towers. You noticed towers, yeah. So does every citizen here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good. Steve, I moved here from Oklahoma, and in Oklahoma, the state climatology office that assists the weather service, my employer, runs a meso net, which are on That's right. other stations in each of the 77 counties. And there are they did on a shoestring budget, and they go through the state police wireless back end. Yep. So a similar concept. Yeah, similar concept, very similar. It is. Like, it's like, it's like a hybrid mesh in a way, if you think about it. It very much is. So let's talk about SciTech. What SciTech is, or what Rios is. Um, Rios is an interoperability system. Okay, and so. Let's say we have a terrorist attack in Charlottesville, and we've got to bring in FBI resources, uh, other federal resources, who we do not have interoperability with, okay? And we do not have interoperability with a number of outside resources that would have to come into this area. Rios is very quick. Uh, it's, it's really, uh, it's in a rack over at ECC. Um, you plug in a portable radio, so you, 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 the FBI guy gives you one of, the, one of their radios on the frequency that they want to use to communicate with us. We take it, we plug it into the rack, into the system, and it, it will create interoperability between our systems. Um, so what's really cool about this as well, we've never done it, but they did it in Arlington. They plugged, uh, what's, what's the repeater frequency for, for uh, what's the primary repeater we're using? What's the frequency? 1676. What is it? The 1676. 1676. So we could take an HT that anybody has here, and we could plug it into the system, and you can talk to us, and you can talk to any police officer on the, on the police pan. It's really neat stuff. It's not new. It's been around for, for 10 years or so, uh, maybe a little bit longer, but it's really neat. So what's also neat is, I don't have my police radio, but I do have my iPhone here, right? And um, this is my iPhone. County uh, provides this to me. I also have Rios on this as well. And I'm going to log in. And we're going to listen for a minute. Um, so what I have on here right now is my portable radio. This is my portable police radio. And, um, and I can talk to, I can turn on uh, Charlottesville's system, Albemarle's system, fire rescue, emergency management, uh, University of Virginia, uh, any one of those and, and listen to their system. So, that, so what we have So what we have here, this is the push to talk button right here. And all I have to do is push to talk that and I talk to the dispatcher. Mm -hmm. So what's really neat is this phone's also Bluetooth, right? So I can put this in my car, turn my Bluetooth radio on in the dashboard of my Dodge Charger out there and all the sound and stuff comes through the stereo speakers. Uh, <laughs> This is neat stuff because I got a I got a police radio everywhere I go, um, and this is also part of Rios, and what they provide. I try I can be anywhere. That's the cool thing. I can be uh, on the Chesapeake Bay fishing, way out of range of our repeater system, but in range of some cell phone service, right? And communicate, and I have, and that's awesome. It's awesome technology. Unfortunately, it's real quiet right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, turn, 
I'm I created all of you, I <laughs> <laughs> uh, No, let's just not do that. Um, so that's, that's sort of the two faces of Rios. Um, kind of needs, so there's an app for that, right? There, there's a lot of hammerchair radio apps coming out, you know, uh, as well. And maybe those apps will grab the young people to this hobby, because we all struggle to bring young people into the hobby, right? So this is Viochi. Uh, that's the replacement for Web EOC. Uh, we used it uh, during the snowstorm quite a bit. It actually, it was very successful. One of those days of the snowstorm, I was deathly ill. Had a bad cold. Uh, did not want to dig out and go into the e EOC. So guess what? They got an app for that. Uh, I've got Viochi on my uh, phone. It's logging in now. There it is. And so I was able to stay on top of the major snowstorm here in Elmar County from the comfort of my bed uh, while I was nursing a cold and, uh, and making decisions and deploying resources and looking at where the crashes were around the county, uh, looking at where the resources were. So that's cool. That's good stuff. Questions about Viochi? Yeah, that allow you so you you don't listen to the incidents, um, but you can see them. Like uh, there's a map, and it in, in the overlay of the map, I can see where every crash has been reported in Albemarle County. I can see where every power outage is in Albemarle County. I can see where every tree has been reported to come down, you know, because of ice. Um, and all those kinds of things. I can see VDOT incidents that they enter into the system. So it's, so it's really, you get a good understanding of what's going on when all the players are tied into this thing. How, how does this differ from like the fire incident reporting system and the rescue incident reporting system? Well, it's, it's uh, all, out, out difference is it's, it's, it's an all hands, all um, discipline. So it's cross That's right, cross discipline. So you're you're not only seeing what the fire department and rescue departments are doing, you're also seeing what social services is doing. Because yes, in this last snowstorm, we had to set up shelters, all right, for people who were out of power and out of electricity and all that. And social services has that responsibility. Um, you had to see where they're. You know where the snow plows were going. You know all those kinds of things. So it's it's really multidisciplinary. Uh, so total awareness. Uh, some of the current technology that we're using that don't really fall into the communications, but really fa fall into crime fighting. Uh, so that's our existing records management system. It's called Pistol. It's not a bad records management system. We're going to replace it with the new CAD system. It's okay. Um, we share it with the three jurisdictions, UVA police in Charlottesville and us. Um, yeah, it's okay, but it's time for a refresh because that's 10 years old. License plate readers, that's always controversial in uh, Albemarle County. So, uh, yeah, we do have license plate readers. And, yeah, I support them. And I... Um, and I'll take the heat for it if, uh, if people are concerned about it. Um, we, um, we use it primarily for criminal investigative purposes only. Uh, it does not drive down the road recording license plate. It, it takes, uh, uh, looks at thousands of license plates an hour. And it'll run it against a database that we have. And we get to pick the database. Perhaps it's Virginia's. Uh, VSIN or NCIC database that checks for stolen vehicles, right? So stolen vehicle database, it might check for that. If we're looking for a specific person and we know their tag number, it will scan the cars as you drive by and and if it's a hit, they'll say, oh, okay, we found Ed's car, you know? Uh, and there it is. It's, it's instantaneously. Um, so are there cameras in multiple strategic no, so we don't have any fixed cameras. Uh, these cameras, typically there's two of them and they're mounted on the rear trunk of the police cruiser. Uh, one's pointing to um, 
seven o'clock, you know, one's pointing to four o'clock, um, and, and toward the rear. And so it's scanning car, uh, tag numbers. Uh, we use, we've used it a number of times for burglaries. If we have burglaries in the neighborhood, and we, and it, it's a pattern or trend and it seems to be the same neighborhood, we'll sign an officer to a car that's equipped with one of these things to go into that neighborhood and, and, uh, and scan and perhaps we can dig up a suspect. So, you know, we can, we can enter in people who have been known to be burglars or known suspects in their tag numbers and if we get a hit, that's good. So, most recently, probably the best catch that, that we all heard about was the shooting at uh, uh, Smith Mountain Lake, right? Where, uh, where the reporter was shut gunned down. Uh, that was caught with a Virginia State Police license plate reader. That, that uh, gentleman was caught with one of those devices. Yeah. So our data uh, gets purged uh, after a, a set amount of time. Um, we store our data with, at the Waynesboro Police Department. We share that data. Um, Right now, our license plate readers are not up and operational at the moment. Uh, we need to, uh, to re-engage in that program. One of the reasons we took them off the street temporarily was to allow the Virginia General Assembly to kind of work through some changes to the law. Uh, Attorney General uh, made some decisions on when you can use it and when you can't, and that's all been cleared up now. So uh, we're going to unpack and put these back on the road. Any questions about license plate readers? Communication system they use? Uh, they use, they, uh, well it depends on which, which, um, which database that you're, you're scanning. If you're scanning VSIN for stolen cars, if that's where you're trying to make a match, um, it's, it's going through a computer-aided dispatch system. Um, in other cases, you may have the database in your in in your car on a uh, thumb drive, depending on what it is. Okay, so. Yep. That's right. If you have a stolen car. Mm -hmm. uh, very controversial, Big Brother kind of stuff for some people, and I understand that. Uh, yes. controversy. How about facial you know, we don't have that here. We did, we did have it uh, in Fairfax when I was in Fairfax. In fact, many officers carried a unit with them. Um, so when they suspected somebody was lying to them about their identity, you know, they could snap a picture and it, it scanned through there real quick and identify the person. It's pretty neat technology. Probably after that. Probably after, you're probably right. <laughs> if not, there will be one. Somebody's going to make a lot of money off of it, right? Uh, you know, this is body cameras. Uh, big thing in the news these days, body cameras for police officers. Uh, I bought body cameras for the department back in 2013. Uh, so we've had them a while. We have what's called cop view. I had one to bring to show you a pass around. Unfortunately, I left it in my car. Uh, it's about the size of an old pager, okay? And, um, and it's worn on the lapel almost like this microphone is, is worn. Um, that's already old technology, what I bought in 2013. So there's, there's a lot newer stuff out there. Um, we're going to go to a system that typically is about the size of a small flashlight but clips onto your um, glasses here if you wear glasses. Uh, you can also wear it on your lapel. Like this. Nah, no, it's pretty light. It's actually pretty light. Um, you can wear it on your lapel. We, we actually don't prefer wearing it here. Why do you think that is? It's locked by paperwork. It's not looking where you're looking. That's, that's, that's part of it. So someone else said something about blocking paperwork, blocking it. Yeah, you got to take a look in Uh-huh. That's good. Probably one of the big reasons we, we you know, we've been, we've got a lot of experience with these things already is, all right, I'm going to shoot somebody or got somebody prone down and and we need to review that well guess what you can't see anything right so we prefer up here uh, or on the on the lapel um, so I ordered uh, or I put in the budget uh, new body cameras so that we can begin to equip all the officers with uh, cameras um, 
that's so far has not made it through the budget process this year. Um, it is what it is. We do have cameras in all the cars, and that's on the right hand side here. And that's been invaluable for 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 evidence, but it's been invaluable for citizen complaints against police officers. Because guess what? Some people don't like us. And 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 they'll complain on us. And we get a lot of well, I'd say we get a lot. We get a fair amount of uh, uh, complaints where a citizen said, well, this officer was very rude to me and very unprofessional, and I want something done. I want him fired, whatever. So Internal Affairs investigates it, and the very first thing we do is we pull this, right? We pull the video. A lot of times these complaints come in third party. Grandma comes in, says, you stop my son just because he's black or just because he's looked at you ugly or just whatever okay and you had no reason to harass him well we'll pull this thing and sometimes we'll sit down with grandma and say hey come on in we want to we want to show you your your angelic grandson's actions with this officer and then grandma goes home and beats the boy to death <laughs> um, so I would say that about 95 percent of the complaints against officers that we receive can be mitigated by that. Many, many are false. You know, if you're facing criminal charges, you're going to try to do everything you can to get out, right? Um, the, some of them don't rise to a violation of a policy, but they do indicate that, uh, you know, Somebody needs some better training. An officer needs some better training on how to deal with people. Okay, so we deal, we do that, and then some lead to violations, but very few, very few. Officers want body cameras. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of like wearing a vest, Joe. Right? It's like wearing a vest. It's a hot day. It's 95 degrees. You're directing traffic. Last thing you want to do is wear a bulletproof vest because you're sweating your butt off, right? Uh, but you know it's going to save your life, so you'll wear it. Well, officers, at least in my department, view body cameras as a necessity. They don't really want to be videotaped everywhere they go, all right? But it protects them. It protects them in the decisions that they make, and they know that. And so it's almost like protection, like a bulletproof, bulletproof vest. I know uh, working with the University Police Department that there are times they actually turn them off. Yep. Um, are there times that your department turns them off? Um, there are times we turn them on. And so let me, let me tell you that uh, anytime, our policy says, anytime we are in an interaction with a citizen where we could uh, face some danger or some threat or uh, resistance, okay? So it's on every time they're on a traffic stop because that's one of the most dangerous things you go on. It's on when you're on a domestic dispute because that's one of the most dangerous things you go on, right? Um, it's off if I just want to sit here and bullshit with Jim here for a few minutes. Hey, you know, I'm not having it on. We're going we're gonna to go to 7-Eleven. I'm going to have a cup of coffee. I'm going to talk to Jim. So for, day, for most of the time, it's off. But when they're in an encounter with a citizen where they feel they need it either for evidence or for protection or in case of a threat, it's going to be on. That's the simplest way to describe the policy. I'm just curious, and we can move on. I've read some stuff talking about these, these cameras. Have you got the, uh, well, what do you call it, that hot or uh, basically where, where they know the location of the has the location of all the cars. Not yet, but go ahead. But the information's coming into the EOC. I've read that they're talking about putting these where they're constantly going back to the EOC so the dispatch people can actually see, okay, we've got an officer down, what can the car see? Is that something that you guys are moving into? Um, down the road in the future, I think we'll have the ability to do that, not at, at, at the moment. And, and In fact, we don't have any of the new technology cameras. Nobody's wearing these cameras here yet. Uh, we wear these at special events. We talk about field day, right? Well, our field day is Fox Field races, okay? <laughs> uh, and so they're all wearing this, okay, at Fox Field races. If we have a protest downtown, uh, and we have to be there, we're wearing these. 
you know. Or if we're doing some sort of operation, like we do a uh, river rat operation down at the James River, you know, and we're going to be encounter countering a lot of drunk people who aren't happy with us, we may be deploying with this. So we're waiting for the new technology and whether we can afford it and those kinds of things. What do you think is the most expensive part about the body cameras? Batteries. Batteries. Who else? Storage. You win. Give him the uh, take from the raffle. <laughs> it's the storage. It's the cloud storage for all that. Uh, we figure about 17 terabytes, 17 to 22 terabytes, just for this police department alone, a year. It's a lot of lot of storage. <laughs> so that's one reason the purge. Right? Pardon me. That's one of the reasons you'll purge some of the. Right. There, there is. We already have policy for purge, and when that stuff gets purged. But uh, let me tell you something. Um, I'm facing four lawsuits right now. Uh, or the police department is. Uh, I can't comment on the lawsuits, all right? Um, I feel pretty confident. That's, and that's how I'll leave it. Uh, if you're going to sue a police officer in federal court, you have two years to do it, all right? And then, you're, then the statute of limitations runs out, and you can't, you can't go to federal court and file suit. So the, what I have learned in 34 years, I think my bio said 32, 34 years, of police work is the lawsuits are going to be coming out of nowhere. They're not going to be the incidents you think they're going to come from. They're going to come from the incidents you don't think they're going to come from. And so, um, you know, I'm a big advocate of hanging on to a lot of stuff, but yet there's a lot of nothing that you can purge. Hours. Yeah, hours and hours. The other, the second most important or expensive part of this program is a data manager just to manage the data. Just to manage the data and the amount of FOIAs that will come in, getting ready for court cases, evidence, all that stuff. It's an expensive program. Oh, let me go back to links for a minute. So I uh, talked about technology. Links, anybody know what Links is? Okay. Links is a, it's, um, a shared records management system. It was created by NCIS, uh, first in uh, uh, Hampton Roads area, along with the local police departments down there. Uh, had a lot of problems with crime on base, and the people on base were dealing with the same thugs that the local police down there in, in Tidewater were dealing with, but they weren't really sharing information. So they developed this system, long story short. <laughs> Northrop Grumman got involved and came up with all the technology. Uh, rewind, uh, moved the clock forward about five years. Big success in Hampton Roads. Uh, I started links in the Washington, D.C. area and um, got that kicked off. Big, big success in Washington, D.C. So now we decide to move this thing through the country. And Virginia has an entire, the entire state's covered by links. You have to join if you're a law enforcement agency and participate. I'm on the executive board of Virginia Links. What does it do? It connects all those records management systems. So all the police reports that I write, somebody in Hampton Road, if they're, they, they come in contact with somebody, they run them through Links, they can pop up and see all the police reports all over the East Coast that this person has been involved in, or all the suspicious events this person has been involved in, or all the arrests. Uh, local arrest that may not be an NCIC or visa. So it's, it's really data interoperability. Any questions about links? All that stuff you probably do by fax and phone calls. In the old days, that's right. So this is uh, in all the cars. It's in our compu computers in the cars and officers can access that today. Crime View, this is something you might be interested in. We call it Crime View. Uh, that's our uh, crime analysis system that the police department uses internally. Uh, our crime analyst uses it every day to determine trends and where things are. You all know that you can use it too, don't you? It's called uh, Crime Mapping. And so you go to the police department's website and on the tab on the left hand side, it's the third thing down on the tab, 
check crime in my neighborhood. And you can click on that and then I'll take you to crimemapping.com. And that pulls up all, it pulls all our data out of our crime analysis system and allows you to learn how to be your own crime analyst. So it's, uh, it's not real time data, but it's 12, 12 hours. You know, so if you hear, oh, I saw the police in my neighborhood the other day, they were visiting my neighbor, and you want to be nosy, you can do that. Okay? Questions about crime mapping? Photo red, yeah, everybody loves photo red enforcement. Uh, I just thought I'd give you a quick update on photo red. Uh, obviously, we pulled it down at Rio Road in 29 because of the construction. Um, I could have kept it up there, but I thought it was totally unfair uh, with all the barricades and the road, road closures and the chaos. So it's I pulled so it. Mm -hmm. It is it's confusing. So I pulled it, and. Um, we're going to relocate it. Uh, we had already established that a second location was going to be at Stony Point Road, Route 20, and uh, Richmond Road, US 250. So the goal or the plan is to move that system that was at Rio over to 20 and 250, which is another real high crash, high violation intersection in the county. Questions about that? I do have a question. I've been hit by the system. And uh, the people that contacted me had nothing to do with Albemarle County. Um, the company that basically they made me an offer. They said, <laughs> you pay this and we won't report it to your insurance company. And I thought, well, that's a little odd. Or maybe it was paid within a certain amount of time. I don't remember exactly what it was. But it was kind of a, if you go along nicely, we won't turn you in or whatever. Is that commonly done? Ah, uh, news to me. Uh, was this scammer the one right at the right? They mail they mail you a violation. Yeah, picture you, of my truck. They they mail you a link so you can watch yourself running through the traffic light and, and see the violation. And uh, you may have cut you may have called maybe one of their numbers. Is that how they got hold of you? Well, it was all done through the mail. Okay, so you didn't call anybody or nobody talked to you. So it's not a moving violation in Virginia. It's a moving violation to run a red light, but it's not a moving violation if you get caught by one of these systems. It's an administrative violation, so they don't report it to the insurance company. Interesting. Okay. Is it a private contractor runs it? Private contractor I pay to, to run the system. Um, Does he get a percentage? Of it's not a percentage. It's a set... It's a set fee. Like, yeah. It's a set fee. Uh, I think it's thirty-five hundred dollars a year. That's right. But if the camera gets it, that's right. Makes sense. Out. Makes sense. Now. Do they charge under the same code? No, it's an administrative violation. It's charged under a county code specific for a photo red light. Um, I always get a question about retention of the data. Anybody interested in that? Okay, I'll go on then. Five years. <laughs> Mike, and then you. Um, how about um, school buses? Yeah. Are they planning to put some? We can't. We can't. And uh, let me get to your question, and I'll finish up, Mike. No, I'll finish up. No, you're you're what? I was just wondering whether a police officer had to review that before. Yes. So. The company sends us all the violations, and they, th they throw some out, you know, the close calls and all that, they, they throw out, or if you can't really see, uh, or there's a, a truck that maybe pulled out and kind of caused somebody to run a red light, you know, they pull those. And then they ship all that to the police department, and an actual officer goes through every watches every one of these violations, and we throw out a fair amount on top of that. They go, oh, you know, uh, I could see why that person ran the light because of what was going on, you know, whatever. Um, I'd say we throw out about a quarter, of, uh, and I think the company throws out about a third. All right? These are close calls. You know, they ran the light, but maybe they're right on the line, okay? 
Uh, so yeah, an officer does review those uh, before we sign off on them and before you get a notification. And to go back to Mike's uh, issue, uh, refresh my memory, um, school bus. School bus. So uh, we have a lot of school buses being passed in the county and we put the system on a couple of school buses just to see how bad the problem was because we always hear from the school bus drivers, why can't you follow us around, you know? Uh, we don't have time for that, but uh, so this is good technology maybe to prevent some very serious accidents of kids getting waffled, right? Um, the, the law doesn't allow us to do, to administer the stop arm camera system the same way as it works for this. And we, we tried to get it changed this year and we just can't. So we can mail a violation here under the stop arm ordinance. We have to personally serve a police officer, somebody the summons. And I, I just don't have the time to do that. And when we did the test run, I think we calculated about 6,000 violations a year. We guesstimated. I don't have that kind of capacity. So. <laughs> uh -huh. Ten days we hold the data on photo red light if there's no violation. Ten days. If we need to pull that data like we needed to do for Hannah Graham, right, for searching for Hannah Graham and other high profile cases, we have to do a court order and get a judge permission to pull that data, to look at that, that data to see if the violator was in there. Is that information put back in your license plate recognition system? No, not at all. It's not even connected. Upcoming technology we're working on right now, and I'm coming to the, to the end of this, e-citation, um, new CAD RMS, police firearms range, you're going to wonder, well, why does that have anything to do with technology? And then body cameras we talked about. E-citation, what is that? That's, that's a simpler way for the police officer to write the ticket, all right? So that's a pretty mundane, time-consuming, Task, okay, I get your driver's license, go back to the car, get my ticket book out, write it out, press hard, five copies, okay, um, and it takes some time. Well, with Virginia licenses today, you know, they all have this, this code on it. Many from other jurisdictions or other states as well. We can swipe it on our CAD. All right populates it. All we got to do is enter in. Uh, the GPS, by the way, for the new CAD and RMS already identifies the location of the stop. All right. Um, we just print it out on, uh, on print, printer paper in the car. The printer is about this big. Okay. And uh, we're done with the ticket in a much faster, more efficient way. It automatically populates the court's traffic docket and system so it saves time on the clerk of the court's uh, office. Any questions about e-citation? Sir? Throw on the back of the license plate. Uh, the, uh, yeah, on, on the license. Does that also include the photograph? We, the, it, doesn't pop, it doesn't pop up on our screen when you run that. It may have that data in yeah, there, but we, we don't do, we don't have that. Uh, like your name, address, and birthday. Yep. I had a question going back to the cameras. Um, there's the, the we got like traffic cameras and sensors up on some of these stop uh, right. intersections. How do those fit in? They're not. They're not. They're they're technically they're cameras, but they're not. They're not. They're not recording cameras. They're they're uh, targeting cameras to show that something's in that lane uh, to trigger the traffic light system. They don't actually take pictures. You can't retrieve photographs off of it. I know I see them all over the place. I go, whoa, you know, cameras everywhere. No, not really. It's a, it's a sensor device, but it is a, technically a camera. I have a question. Why not answer the digi ticket? Does the officer have any latitude? Like, well, the person was only three miles on the limit, I'll just give him a written warning, or is there hard and fast rules in the county? Um, yes, they have discretion, uh, and it's legis legislative discretion. Officers on all misdemeanors and traffic uh, citations have uh, the authority and uh, flexibility to cut you a break. Um, I can tell you 
typically Amar County Police and uh, Virginia State Police um, when they're running radar, or doing speed enforcement, they're not interested in the people doing nine or ten miles over. There's a lot more people going faster that, that's going to keep them occupied. So if they do pull you over, um, yeah, I mean, you're probably doing more than that. Yep. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. Yep. I agree, Ed. Uh, our CAD system, I'm not going to go a great deal. It's uh, the company's New World Systems. What it does differently than FatPot, at least I hope, okay, I hope, is it is going to track where the officers are. Uh, FatPot has not done a good job at doing that, all right? It is going to make recommendations to the dispatchers on who to send to calls based on location. But you may have an officer that's closer, but drive time may be further. Well, this system will also uh, calculate that information into the system and, and send the, the nearest uh, available officer. What's that going to mean with you? I'm predicting it's going to lower our response times a little bit. Okay. Um, what this also does, I mean, the officers probably don't appreciate this. Uh, maybe many they do, but it certainly records their speed, uh, the entire shift that they're working. You know, so you can't you can't lie about something. You know, right? Um, this uh, system is. Uh, with the redundancies of the school system and private uh, cell phone service, uh, we expect coverage to be much better on this system than what we're current, currently using, which is really run on the backbone of our police communication system. Okay? Do you expect that will carry over into the fire and rescue? It is. They're getting the same system, um, same backbone. So the police firearms range, here's a uh, a picture that was taken, I guess, about a month ago. This is all done here. It's an indoor range. Uh, be lo loaded, located at the Milton Airfield uh, off of Milton Road. Uh, some of you probably have the cross hobby of uh, RC planes and whatnot. Well, it's right near the field there. Um, so why is technology a part of this? Well, we're going to have a simulator room in this range. Um, which will allow officers to go through a variety of different simulations, uh, dangerous situations, shoot, don't shoot situation. It's all about teaching them critical thinking skills. When they need to pull that trigger, when they need to back off, when they need to reassess, when they need to de-escalate, or when they need to escalate. Um, so this is good. We can, uh, we can put them through a classroom instruction we can run them through this simulator, and we can put them on the line, too, in this uh, police firearms range. Half of the range is set up for tactical-type uh, shooting. So you'll notice some garage doors here. We can actually bring a police cruiser into the tactical range and simulate an officer going to a call, you know, and coming out of his cruiser. Any questions on the range? That will be... Uh, it's one of the things I get to get done before I retire, so that will be done by June 1st. Um, that's just a picture of the, the newer style cameras that we talked about earlier. And that's it. Um, I'll take any questions. It doesn't have to be about any of this. It can be anything you want about the police department. The license plate cameras, does it check for expired plates? No. It does not. I go in Charlottesville. <laughs> You're I safe. Two or three every time I go in. You're safe, Jim. <laughs> oh, I, I'm not worried about me. In the back of the room first. Question about the interoperability of like your, uh, your pullovers and stuff along the same lines. I let my tags expire by one day and got pulled over on um, three consecutive days by the three um, departments that serve this area. I was curious about the terminal. I was like, can't you see that this is the second time I've been pulled over? And it's it depends. Um, under the new CAD RMS system, there's a new system in there for, for warning tickets, you know, for when we're letting somebody go. So if you, you get warned by Charlottesville, 
that your tag's one day over and you get pulled over by Albemarle the next next day, they're able to pull that up and say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's your name? Yeah. What? Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You got stopped yesterday. How come you didn't get this fixed, right? Press hard, five copies. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I was going to ask you if you know anything about a few years ago there was FCC proposed some 700 megahertz nationwide yeah. public safety yeah. operations. And they were talking about LTE and broadband. Yep. You know, that's a good question. I, I don't know what happened to that. That was a, a great concept, a great idea. Uh, you know, we could push a lot of data through. Uh, those frequency ranges and um, uh, at one time I was very plugged into that and part of the national discussion on that but when I moved down here I got unplugged by it and uh, I haven't been keeping up on it. I know there was some attempt by some of the commercial yes there was to build this network yep. in exchange for some of the bands. yes there was it just seems to have died recently I have a sinking feeling and I hope I'm wrong that the FCC sold some of that stuff off Surprise, surprise. Does Charlottesville have the ride along program? Albemarle well, and Charlottesville do. Both. Yep. Ed? Steve, I live on Markwood Road in Earlysdale, and I suspect the crime rate from looking at data is relatively low. But based on ver seeing very few police cars, my gut reaction is that you're short staff. Is, am I right that you could use some have more officers? <coughs> at least in the north yeah. of the county. So we. Uh, we have 140 authorized strength police officers in Albemarle County. Um, we rank 129th out of 133 lowest staff police departments in the state of Virginia. It's a huge so it's, it is uh, a significantly short police department in terms of staffing. Um, I don't have to operate you know at some national standards of two officers for every thousand but um, I, today right now I should have about a hundred and sixty officers hundred seventy officers so you know so it's not your imagination we are one of the lowest staff police departments in the state Is that a budgetary thing? you know it's uh, yeah that's a good question Joe I, I, yes it is a budgetary thing especially this year we're in a bad way as the county budget is concerned. But I think it's also of people having their head in the sand and, and not really paying attention to where we sort of lie compared to our neighbors and, and so forth. So uh, I think it's a little bit of both. Yep. Uh, I know the current system you guys have to get an open sky. Is that going to be carried over to the new CAD system? or? Open sky. That's what I was told for the back pot system that you guys use for Oh the data conversion? Yeah, the data. yeah, there's there's a data conversion process that will occur. Okay. And and that's that always scares the living hell out of me, the data conversion process. It never goes <laughs> well. It never goes well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I think that scanners are no longer effective for listening in to uh you can listen to us. You can still listen to Albemarle County Police Department. There's a nap over that. Yeah, well, yeah, there probably is. You can still listen to us. Um, yeah. Um, how do I feel about it? Um, I get mixed feelings. I'm okay with everybody listening to what we're doing and how we transact business on a broad uh, level. Um, yeah, well, you know, who, who listens to the scanners? Uh, hobbyists, um, want to be squirrels maybe, um, but hobbyists, right? Um, and, and the media. And the media is listening to the scanner every day and they show up. Um, and that's okay. Uh, so I'm okay with the general listening of what we do and the types of calls. I think it's fascinating stuff just to listen to. You know, when, when we have to go covert and we're doing a surveillance operation or a search warrant or whatever, we're going to go to the encrypted frequencies anyway. Nobody can listen to that stuff. So we have 
that ability to do is that. Is that part of the 800 Yeah, system? yeah, yep, yeah. it is. We have a number of different encrypted uh, frequencies that we use for tactical purposes. You know, we're not on them that much, but we need to get over to them. We we do, and yeah. So that's my my opinion. There's you know, probably police chiefs around that would disagree with me, and they don't want anybody listening. I, I don't really. I, you know, it'd be, it'd be nice, like Joe m talked about the budget. You know, why we don't, why we're not properly staffed and all that, or asked a question about it. Well, I'd like people to hear what we're doing and just hear how busy we are. <laughs> Holy cow! One car, one call after the other. Of course, it didn't work out when I tried to turn this yeah. on, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jim, what if that, what uh, does the uh, police have to do with the registration of home alarm systems? Anything? Yeah, we so we run a program of the false alarm ordinance maintenance. We run that. We um, we contract with a company uh, to to manage it. Um, we're not totally satisfied with the company, and we're looking at other alternatives and talking to another company that has a little bit better um, people skills. Um, that's, the, that's the best way to put it, um, more helpful to the citizens. So you go on the website. Um, you want to register your burglar alarm. You have to if you have an automated burglar alarm that's going to call an alarm company or 911, you have to register, it's the law. Um, you go on our website, you log on and you click and you're going to go to another website that looks like ours and has all our logos and stuff on it, but it's really a company in Baltimore, okay, uh, that's running it. And you fill out the information and you send it in and you know unfortunately there's a lot of people in this county that just don't know how to use the internet. Well, you know? The reason I ask is I've tried several times to register, and I fill on all the data, and I, I get down to the bottom and you click know, register, and it says, we cannot register okay, your system. I can tell you. I just wanted to let, let him answer. Okay. I'll let you answer about Yeah, I, I, um, other people have had similar problems. And so we'll fill it, we'll do it for you. You can call the station. i got a, a person named Rosa Thacker who will do it for you. Yeah. Um, and we'd make that known. Um, the company will walk you through it too, and they'll even do it. But we, but they've been hit and miss in terms of customer service, in my opinion. It, okay, I had the identical problem two weeks ago, and I called the company. They were very professional, and they said the previous owner of our house had the alarm registered. So what? And when they moved, they didn't report that uh, they moved to a retirement community in Rose. So. They, right on the spot, they corrected it, and then I got a letter in the mail thanking me for registering it, and they gave me a login and a password. Yeah. And my neighbor, two weeks ago, had a similar issue, where if you're assuming you bought your house and it was alarm the previous owner registered, mm -hmm. that prevents you. Uh, I bet our error message. I'll have to right check now. that. Yeah. Joe, I knew I was talking about. Right. Is the ring doorbell bullshit? The ringing doorbell. The ring door, I, I, I've seen the ad on TV many times. It's a doorbell that has a camera in it that links to your cell phone. Yes. So when you're not home, you Those can pretend you're home because you can talk through the doorbell. But if you have not been barraged by this particular, I might be watching bad networks. <laughs> um, by this particular device, I won't ask. How late do you stay up at night, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, that's good. I, I, I've seen it. I, I'm not familiar with it. No. Yeah. Well, thank you all. Great questions. Yeah. Appreciate it.